Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Today, we are diving into the intriguing world of fluid dynamics, and we will look at how these principles apply to our bodies, especially the circulatory and respiratory systems. So grab your notebooks and let's get started. First, let's tackle viscosity and viscous drag. Viscosity, simply put, is a measure of a fluid's internal friction. Imagine trying to swim in a pool of honey versus a pool of water. The honey is more viscous and creates more resistance, making it harder to swim. The resistance you feel is due to viscous drag, a non-conservative force generated by viscosity. Now let's keep imagining that honey pool. In an ideal scenario, when you're swimming smoothly, that's laminar flow. It's ordered and streamlined like a calm river. But if you start thrashing about, you create chaos and disorder. That's turbulent flow. Think of it like the rapids in a river. Next we have Purcell's law, which determines the rate of laminar flow. The key takeaway here is the relationship between radius, between radius and pressure gradient. It's inversely proportional to the fourth power, for example, if we were to double the radius of the pipe, the flow rate would increase by 16 times, not just double. Flow rate is quite simple. It's the cross-sectional area of a pipe times the velocity moving up, times the velocity of the fluid. The continuity equation tells us that fluids will flow more quickly through narrow passages and more slowly through wide ones. So if you've ever pinched a garden hose to spray water further, you've witnessed this firsthand. Bernoulli's equation states that the sum of static pressures and dynamic pressures will be constant between any two points in a closed system. This brings us to the Venturi effect. As fluid passes through a constricted area, its velocity will increase, and its static pressure will decrease. Imagine a river narrowing into a gorge. The water speeds up and the pressure drops. But how can we remember this horribly long formula? The initial pressure here is kind of like our p naught. This is the pressure from the atmosphere, typically. It's just the pressure that's there. And then we've got our 1 half rho v squared plus rho gh. And this looks really similar to 1 half mv squared and mgh. So this is how I like to remember it. I think back to my kinetics equations and I say, well, I'm gonna replace all my rows with Ms and I can keep everything else the same. And I just need to remember that I'm starting with some force. The force is pressure. So that helped me a lot with remembering this massive equation for the MCAT. So I hope that helps you too. Now for the cool part, because people are always complaining on the MCAT. They're saying, well, physics, physics, how does it relate to being a doctor? Well, here it is. Time for some physiology, so let's buckle on up. Our circulatory system is a closed system with non-constant flow. Sound familiar? Think about your pulse. The equation delta P equals cardiac output times radius tells us that the change in pressure is equal to the cardiac output times the resistance. So the larger the cross-sectional area of our blood vessels, of our blood vessels, the less resistance there is, leading to slower blood velocity. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about breathing. You're doing it, I'm doing it, we're all doing it. Inspiration and expiration create a pressure gradient, not just for the respiratory system, but for the circulatory system too. In our lungs, the alveoli, air has virtually zero speed. This allows for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, a process critical for our survival. And that wraps up our session on fluid dynamics for the MCAT. Remember, understanding these concepts is key for both physiology and biology session, for both physics and biology sections of the test. So keep practicing, and until next time, happy studying. Thank you so much for watching our video on fluid dynamics, and I'll see you next time.